So we've done a good amount of functionality for our messaging application. I want to wrap this up with a recap and uh, some next steps, next steps of what you can do with this uh, application next, right? So we're going to start out with what are the things we did? We first created the uh, overall system design of what we wanted the messaging application to be, right? We had a rough idea of what we wanted. We wanted a highly scalable, highly available uh, messaging application where people can exchange messages with each other. Uh, we then decided the the kind of tech stack, the high level tech stack that we wanted to implement. Uh, and uh, we also figure out what the user experience is going to be. We did some rough wireframes. We've kind of gotten close to the wireframes that we initially set out to achieve, right? So we've got that. And uh, we went from there to uh, the data modeling, which is the most important part of uh, you know building applications with Cassandra. Uh, we did the data modeling. We figured out the logical data model, the physical data model, and from there we started coding it. Right? We created a Spring Boot application with Spring Security. We created an instance of Cassandra on Astra DB, and we hooked our Spring Boot application to Cassandra, and then we started iterating on the functionality. Right? We created one, uh, you know, controller and uh, a template. And then we created the entities required to render all these things, right? So we created an entity for folders. We created an entity for the emails that need to be displayed inside a folder, right? We were able to navigate between all these different things. And then we were able to implement all these small functionalities, right? So the ability to view an email, the ability to reply to an email, reply all, and uh, manage the, the way a send email goes to the necessary folders for the necessary users. Right? If I send the email to a bunch of people, it needs to go to those people. It needs to go to my send items folder. And then we also tracked the counters. We were able to figure out what emails are read, what are unread. So for example, this one's unread. We were able to figure out like, okay, I got to click on this, which means that the counter is going to reduce. The counter is over here. And then we can um, track the counter and keep keep it in sync with the number of emails that were read or unread, right? So we implemented all this stuff. A lot of other interrelated functionalities. And that's the thing about an application like this, right? Once you cover the basic platform on which you're building this application, all the really remaining stuff are minor functionalities that you're going to have to implement. Like a couple of things that we did in the last video, right? Small stuff, but that has to be done. And all these pieces together form the feature set for an application like this. And this is true for most of the consumer facing applications that you build. Like I said, the devil is in the details, right? All these small details add up to provide a good user experience. And uh, having said that, there are a lot of things that are missing in this application, okay? For example, we have created the infrastructure and the data model and all that stuff for creating user folders, right? A user can custom, can create custom folders like we've hard coded this thing over here. Well, we don't have the ability for the user to create one. Like I'm opening this app. I want to create a new custom folder. I don't have the ability to do that, right? We need to provide for that functionality. How do you do it? It's actually pretty simple. Maybe you just put a plus icon over here and they click on it. We ask them for a folder name. Once they give the folder name, what do we do? We create a folder object and then send it to the folder repository. That's it, right? But that has to be done. Okay, another thing, color. We associated the color property with the folder, but we're not doing anything with the color. It'll be cool to have the color icon in the, you know, next to the folder name, or perhaps when you click on a folder, show all the emails in that color, right? Some shade of that color. We can use the color field, which we are not doing, okay? That's another feature we can build. The other one is the um, moving of emails from one folder to another, right? So I have this email, it is in the inbox, Let's say I want to move this to family or I want to move this to important. Well, you can have this drop down here where you can choose one of the existing folders. Again, what do you need to do? In the view page, call the repository, the folder repository and get all folders. We already have all the folders. Well, populate this in a drop down. And when somebody chooses that item in the drop down and click submit, well, what do you need to do? You need to take that email list item and map it to a different folder because it's the email list item which is associating an email with a folder, right? You gotta change that, right? That's another feature that needs to be done. Also, over here in the folder, like when you're showing a list of emails, well, you don't have the ability to multi-select, right? You wanna be able to select something and uh, select a bunch of stuff and do bulk actions on them. We don't have that. 
What bulk action? Well, delete would be a good use case. We don't have delete functionality, right? I can want to click this thing and delete an email. We don't have that. That's yet another function you can implement. So as you can see, there is a whole lot of stuff that's necessary to do. And there's no way I'm creating all of those functionalities and having you watch. These are things that you can do with the platform that I've set in this application. You can kind of build on top of it and implement all of those features. And you can have a really awesome messaging application that is scalable, that is available, and it is also feature rich. All right. So with those words, I'm going to wrap up this code with me series. The code for this application is available on the description of pretty much every video in this code with me series. Uh, and I also have links for other related stuff, like how do you set up uh, the data stacks Astra DB? Well, there is a link in the description for it. Um, so give it a try, play around with this. I hope you learned something. I hope you followed along and you did code with me. And I hope this series was helpful. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for sticking around. And I'm looking forward to making more of these series with other different technologies in the future. Thanks for watching.